Hello and welcome to Benocam. In today's video we are looking at part two of the stalwart restoration project. Now if you haven't already seen the stalwart before, that is this vehicle right here behind me. So this is an amphibious lorry which the British Army used. It was designed in the 1960s and they used them for quite a long time. They used them for like 30-40 years. And yeah, I bought this project a few years ago now. It was in quite a state when I first got it. It needed quite a lot of restoration. It also didn't have an engine with it. So if you haven't already seen part one of this video, this is what it looked like when I first got the project. And we also put an engine in it and got it going for the first time in a long time, which was really good. And yeah, this is what it looks like now. So we've done a full cosmetic restoration on it, taken all the old paint off and got it back to NATO green and black. And we've got it driving around, which has been really good fun. We've had a lot of fun with it. So in today's video, we're going to be getting this amphibious again. So there is quite a lot of work to do, and I'm gonna run through now what needs doing, but it's it's very capable of swimming again. There's not doesn't need that much work, and I've got most of the bits already. So let's show you what it needs doing. So well, as we've already said, this has got most of the swim gear still on it which is good and it's quite unusual as well because a lot of these have the swim gear stripped off so this is where the water actually goes in and you can just see the prop shaft in there and there's a little propeller in that tube you can just see it that's all still in there which is great but the nozzles at the back so this is where the water comes out and to steer you have like a cup which fits over this nozzle so to be able to steer it blocks off here and diverts the water forwards now it's these cups we've got to make it also doesn't have any steering linkage at all so we do have quite a bit of work to do. It's missing on both sides. It's not just the one side. There's the other side nozzle, which again needs its steering cup. So that is one thing we have to do. The other fairly major thing to do is we've got to block up all these holes. So there's an almightyly large hole here where the exhaust used to, we used to come up through. The original exhaust should come up through this port here. I've already blanked that one off. So the original exhaust pipe went up through here. So we don't need this anymore now. So this all needs plating in and welding. And the other issue we have is there are quite a few holes in the hull, which I'll show you now inside. So yeah, just going up into the engine bay. And as I said, this is the diesel Bedford engine, which we've installed. And yeah, let's take a look at the work which needs to be doing to get this to float again. So. As you can see, we've got a large hole here. You can look down and see the wheel. This needs plating up. The owner who had this before me actually made a start plating up some of the holes. So this has already been plated here and here, which you can see just hasn't finished this strip down the side. There's, there's several holes here. These are all below the waterline. I believe the waterline is roughly here somewhere where this lower door seal is. So they're going to need plating up. And when we jump to the other side, there's quite a bit over the other side as well. You can see here a hole and there's a nasty hole here. So all of this is all going to have to be cut out. These, all these weak areas are going to have to be cut out and replated to make sure that no water comes in. But all the lower hull is actually in very good condition, which is good. Good news. We do still need a few bungs. And then it's the swimming gear. As we've already said, this does have its main thrusters and propellers all in here. So this is where the water comes in. And then this drive shaft here is where your propeller is within this tube, which then puts it through the nozzle at the back. And both of these are on both sides, which is great. But what we were missing was the linkage from the gearbox to the steering, the bevel boxes for the, for the thrusters. So there's no drive in between here, but luckily, managed to get hold of a couple of these little prop shafts so these are the actual ones that we need these fit right here between there and then we have these little plates here which connect up into there and yeah those are the drive shafts which are really good to get hold of they're not the easiest things to get hold of they're quite rare so i was very lucky to get hold of a pair of them and yeah we're pretty much then all ready to swim so let's crack on with some of these jobs We 
fire the stower up and we take it down to the farm workshop. Here we have all of the tools to measure out, cut and weld all of the pieces of steel that are required, which now make the hull watertight enough to be able to take it for its first swim. We use a mini grinder to prep the area and a MIG welder to tack the new plates in position before welding them all of the way around ensuring there are no gaps where we have to start and stop. We also cut out the rear quarter and replace that all with new steel, completing the welding work required on the hull. So the next thing to do, we are going to have a go at making some of these cups which fit over the thrusters for the steering. So I've measured one up, got all my dimensions, so I've now drawn it all out on the steel. So we're going to cut these bits up and weld one up, see how it fits. Right, we are all back up in the top shed again now and the stalwart is almost ready to go. So we've done all the hull repairs, there should be no more holes left for water to come in and we've made the steering cups at the back. The one job left to do now is to actually make the steering cups steer when you pull levers inside the cab. So I had an idea for that, I actually was going to use boat teleflex steering cables for the, for the steering and rig up like a dual throttle control inside the cab. But there's been a slight change of plan because I've acquired this. I've actually bought another stalwart. So this is a stalwart Mark II. And this one, it needs full restoration. It is running, but it needs a lot of work. But inside the cab, it actually has a set of original steering levers and all the linkages in place for the steering. So I'm actually gonna borrow that to make the Mark I be able to swim and steer. So. I'll show you now inside what I mean and I'll show you the bits that we're going to borrow. So we'll just jump down inside and yeah here they are. So my Mark 1 actually has this original bracket but what it doesn't have is these which are the original levers for steering the steering the cups at the back and you can see there that there's the linkage and those two control arms run all the way to the back and I'll show you them in the back in a second. But yeah, I already have this bracket, so all I need to do is unbolt these pieces. And just for the meantime, just borrow these. This one does need a lot of work. It is running and driving, but uh, yeah, it's in quite a state. But it's uh, it's an interesting one because it's actually a limber. So it's got the it's got the big high ab on it. For would have been used with the Abbott, which is over there in the end of the shed, for fuel and ammunition. So yeah, it's a, it's going to be an interesting and a very useful vehicle. So yeah, here's the control rods going all the way to the back. They have actually rusted off, so they do need some they do need some repairs. But all the bits are here, and then here this is the linkage which then goes down underneath to steer the nozzles. And then this is the one which goes across the back again, the end is rusted off. But that goes across. But what's important is we've got all these little bits, so we'll take these bits off and I'll be able to fit them to the Mark 1. Yeah, you can see that this one also needs a lot of work. It's it's a long way off swimming. There's an awful lot of daylight coming up through the hull. But everything is here. It's all fairly fairly original and it's going to be going to be a very useful vehicle when it's done actually with the old high ab. It'll be very useful for uh, engine changes and and whatnot. So yeah. There's the Mark 1 right next to it here in the shed. And you can see the difference there looking inside the hull now. It's looking all nice and clean and shiny. I still do have the front prop shafts to put in and all the floor to put back in. But yeah, let's get on now with changing this linkage. Right, you can see now all these bits of linkage have been removed and laid out. And yeah, the right hand side wasn't too bad. That was all in very good condition. All nice and loose. We're missing one end there. We've got quite a lot of ends to replace. So you can see the, the ends of the linkage is gone there. And then that's not too bad. And then this end was a complete and utter mess. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Remake that. That isn't too bad. 
there's both the nozzle covers which I'm probably going to reuse them instead of the ones I've made just to make sure they definitely fit that's the linkage and then there should be two rods then going all the way up this side you can see these are completely and utterly shot they will do as good templates we can reuse some of the bits going right up to the levers which I've removed so we'll give everything a really good clean up and salvage what we can and then we'll make what we don't have and refit it all onto the Mark 1. Right, so another little problem I had along the way. These are the steering nozzles which I took off the Mark 2, cleaned them all up, went to put them on, and of course they don't fit. So the steering nozzles on the Mark 2 is made by a different company, and they are actually they're a little bit taller than the Mark 1 ones. So I'm back to my original what I was making. I'm just copying over the steering bolt position. Just welded that one on, and you can see there the the approximate size difference there uh, the mark one ones are just a little bit narrower so so yeah we're back on them i'm gonna finish these off now drill some holes paint them up and we'll get them fitted right we are almost there now these are the final touches and we're going to give it its first float test which should be interesting done loads and loads of the bits and pieces and all we are doing right now is we suddenly realise that where the light sockets actually go through, you can see where Tom is here drilling, there's actually a hole which goes through into the hull. So um, we're putting that final little lens piece on, this little piece here, I've got a new one of these to go on. That should stop the water going in there. And we've done most of the other work, we've got all the side pins are all in now. And um, I've done, I put a ratchet strap on just to make sure that the doors do stay shut because these things are supposed to have little lock pieces on them and they don't actually work right now so the ratchet strap is just to guarantee that the sides will stay shut because it wouldn't be very good if these handles suddenly flicked out when we were in the water right so this is up in the rear this is where all the new steering linkage has all been put in so you can see here my new steering rods going all the way to the front and they're in position now on both sides and we're just going to give it a little steering demonstration just to make sure that both the cups do move. And here in the cab, we have our steering levers all installed. And we're going to give them a test now. And Tom stood at the back to see if they work. Are you ready, Tom? Right, so the left hand side. That should be reverse. Yep. That's in reverse. That's in reverse. And that is forward. And then this one should be the right. Yeah. Right, that's in reverse position. And that's in forward position. So yeah. What do you reckon to it, Tom? We're gonna have a successful successful first outing or no? According the um Back door seals up, right? <laughs> right, so one final final thing to do and one final issue we've already discovered. All this time I've had a brand new back door sat here in a crate and we just pulled that out this morning, ready to fit. And once again, the Mark 1 is totally different to the Mark 2. So I didn't realise it, but that back door is actually a Mark 2 back door. So it's got a different number of hinges on the bottom and they're in different places. So. We're basically going to have to whack this Mark II back door on and just see if we can get it to fit. Possibly with the use of some ratchet straps to secure it. And uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just gently drive her in and see if she leaks. It'll either be alright or it won't, won't it? What do you reckon? <laughs> Arm bands at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> right, now you can see with the rear door fitted you can see what I mean about this being a Mark II door and not a Mark I door. So the Mark IIs had a different number of, they seem to have had only three hinges on the back. Whereas the Mark II had four, sorry, the Mark I had four. So you can see here that nothing lines up and fits, but it is actually the right size shape and does go on there with the seal being in the right place. So what we're going to do for now is we're just going to we're just going to wrap a farmer's ratchet strap around the back and see if we can pull it in tight enough to not be able to see daylight through it. And we're gonna give that a go, see what happens, isn't it? 
Right, that is the ratchet strap in place on the rear. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work or not, but it's definitely worth a try, considering what we have and how far we've got. It's a shame not to give her a quick dip and see how much water's coming in. So yeah, that's pretty much it now. We've just got to fit some bungs underneath and we're going to trundle up to the quarry and it's water test time. <laughs> Right, we are all up at the old quarry and it is float test time, which should be quite entertaining. So, this is where we're going to try it. So this is an old flooded quarry, it's quite deep, so hopefully it doesn't go to the bottom. But yeah, there's plenty of room in here to give it a test. And the main purpose of today is just to see whereabouts the water is coming in and how bad it is. We know it's going to leak, it's just a case of how badly really it comes in. We've got all our ratchet straps all on, so hopefully they're holding the rear door and the sides in enough. I've done most of the welding myself, so it's bound to lose a little bit of water in various places, uh, gain a bit of water, I mean. So yeah. What do you reckon, Ben? It's a single sim situation, isn't it? It is. It is, and there's only one way to find out. So I'll just show you in the rear as well, what I've done with the swim gear and how all that works before we dunk her in and then we'll stick it in and see what happens. Right, so this is what the rear looks like, like now. I still haven't actually put the fuel tank back where I'd like it. I'd like to put that stainless tank back here in the middle at some point, but haven't quite got round to that yet. What we have done is we've rigged up this linkage here, which enables me to put the swim gear in and out from the cab. So there's a, a rod going into the cab, and then that connects right there, which puts the two prop shafts in gear, which then spins the propellers in these tubes. Right, so to engage and disengage the drive for the swim gear, it's actually this lever here. So we just dip the clutch, make sure it's in neutral, pull this little gate up, that goes back, and then we release the clutch. You can hear the prop shafts there now spinning, which I'll now show you. Right, we are all ready for reversing in and seeing where the leaks are. We've got Tom in the back there, who's going to keep on an eye on the engine bay to see what's going on. And we've got this tow rope here in case it majorly starts taking on water and we cut out. And we've got the mighty 4000 over there ready to pull us out high speed if we uh, have a problem. Which probably means I'll be jumping in the water and wading in, which won't be a very good result whatsoever. So yeah, let's fire it up, reverse it back and see what happens. Hold tight! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any water yet, but it doesn't fucking feel right. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna put the brake on and we'll have a look, see if any's coming in. Be better if you went first. Eh? <laughs> Feels like we're almost floating. As you can see, 
Irish sink. Much water coming in. <laughs> right, let's get out. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of a slight issue. We had smoke coming from one of the thruster drive units. So we decided to call it a day and pretty hastily come back in. And as you can see, I think, the bearing's I think either the bearing or a seal or something there isn't very happy. At least it did get us back in and we didn't sink. And the whole thing actually works very well. I'm quite pleased with that actually. It's, um, a little bit of water did come in. We do have several leaks we need to fix, but generally speaking, no, not it wasn't even enough water in there to actually reach the bilge pump for it to actually pump any water out. So I would still say that's quite a successful first test run, really. Right, that actually worked very well. So we are now back on dry land. I think Vinny is very happy about that. I wouldn't say it's very dry. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we've got a bit of normal Cornish rain, but never mind. And yeah, we are now back on land and that actually did work very well. I'm quite pleased with that. It does not leak that much. There were a few tiny leaks, a few little tiny holes we have to fix. And the steering for the water drives actually works quite well. I was quite impressed with how responsive that was, especially when you rev it. So for a first little dip, I thought that actually went really well. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And we will do a part three where this vehicle is completely ready for an adventure. I'm not quite sure where we'll take it yet, but we'll take it somewhere a lot more adventurous and we will completely finish every little job. Still quite a few little things to finish. So yeah, thanks for watching and we will catch you again next time. <laughs>